as a reminder for those who who know or might not know, National Council of Jewish Women's work in Israel began after the Holocaust when children survivors showed up and no one there knew what to do with them or how to care for them. So we built schools for them and then we never left. And here we are again in the face of mass murder, trying to open the eyes of the world to the unspeakable suffering happening and to ensure those who need can be cared for. National Council of Jewish Women cares about this moment because we care about people. We care about the Jewish people. We care about women, children, and families. We care about Israel. We care about Israelis. We care about Palestinians. And we won't remain silent in the face of terror. So I wanna open this call with some key messages from our organization, um, particularly because we care so much about women, children, and families and about Israel. Um, and I of course want to give a warning that I'll be naming sexual assault and rape, trauma and murder, um, and for everybody to take care of themselves and to mute um, or walk away if they need to um, as we discuss these um, really hard, hard things to talk about. Um, so first, um, and perhaps to be honest, most importantly, given all of the misinformation out there, I want to start by saying that Hamas is a terrorist organization, full stop. Hamas plans an attack meant to kill as many people as possible, and they did so in the most brutal of ways, of which I'm going to share some, right? We know they went door to door through Israeli towns and kibbutzim, shooting entire families, children, and the elderly, killing indiscriminately, and taking more than 150 hostages into Gaza, including an 85-year-old Holocaust survivor who has already seen the worst of humanity once in her lifetime. They took the cell phone of a grandmother and live streamed her murder so that her grandchildren could see. They surrounded thousands of young, innocent people dancing at an outdoor peace festival and concert, slaughtered them, raped the women, and paraded the bodies of some of these women naked back in Gaza to cheers. There are reports that they raped women while calling their mothers on their cell phones so that they could hear their screams as they were assaulted. This is a war crime. These are acts of terror. These are violations of human rights laws. And I wanna say this because we can often feel so gaslit by our own media in this country who are currently referring to Hamas as militants, as Palestinian fighters or even civilians. So make no mistake, the Palestinian people and civilians who we love are not Hamas. This was not people uprising from the occupation. Hamas doesn't care about Palestinian people who they are using as human shields to be killed. Hamas doesn't care about Israeli people who they will murder, torture, and rape with pride. And meanwhile, we are somehow still fighting for people to label Hamas as the terrorist group that they are. So my first point for us to hold and share and correct when needed and to send letters to the editors, as so many of you are so powerful at doing, is that Hamas is a terrorist organization and is not deserving of a two-sided narrative. Murdering Jewish people is not fighting for human rights. Rape is not resistance. And as a country, we have not made excuses for Al-Qaeda. We have not made excuses for ISIS. We should be making no excuses for Hamas. Second, these events have a devastating impact on the global Jewish community. As most of you know, 50% of Jews live in Israel. We are a small people proportionally. Not everyone, but most Jews are connected to someone who has been killed, kidnapped, or missing, or they know someone who's navigating this. This has an overwhelming impact on the Jewish community with loss and fear. Israel is small. It's compared as the size of New Jersey, to put it in perspective here. And therefore, the impact of this loss that would be significant anywhere is a loss that is unfathomable in Israel. 900 people have been killed in Israel, and we expect that to go over 1,000 soon and continue to rise. The largest mass murder of Jews since the Holocaust. If we were to understand that number in the population in the United States, it would be equivalent to 34,000 people being killed in one day. 
260 people were slaughtered at the music festival. If that had happened here in the United States, it would be the largest mass shooting the United States has ever experienced. Given the size of Israel, there is not one person there who is not directly affected. The collective trauma of these events will impact Israel and the Jewish people forever. Similarly to September 11th here, where there was no going back to September 10th, the world was different as we knew it. For Israelis, there is no going back to October 6th. Israel will forever be changed, and we will learn in the coming weeks, months, and years what that will look like. My third point is that hatred against Jews is already accel accelerating across the globe as a result of this. We know anti-Semitism has always been bad. We know it has, um, you know, um, continued to rise in the coming, uh, in the last several months and years. Um, and as a result of this, it will continue to sprout up and it already has. There have been rallies in cities where the crowd chants, gas the Jews, kill the Jews. Pro-Israel protesters have been beaten by anti-Israel mobs. Swastikas and vandalism are showing up on Jewish establishments and college campuses here and abroad. We must have a united front against all forms of hate, including anti-Semitism. And we urge all of you connected to Jewish organizations, whether that be your own local National Council of Jewish Women section or your local synagogue um, to be alert. Um, as we know, there are real life impact and consequences as a result of the attention on um, killing Jews and the acceptable nature of doing that that we're seeing in media and on social media across the world. Four, we value human life equally. We are all created in the divine image. Beyond the headlines and the political complexities, real people, parents, children, families, are the victims in this heinous violence. We hold them close, mourning the great loss of life, and we pray for the safe recovery of all of the hostages. We pray for Israeli and Palestinian civilians alike. And as Israel defends herself, we do not celebrate any civilian losses. In fact, we want a swift and peaceful resolution. We do not want any more human suffering and we certainly want all of the hostages to return home alive. The events on Saturday showcased the absolute worst of humanity. And we hope that in the coming days, we will begin, sorry, to witness the best of humanity. And we're already seeing it. Israelis helping people get the food and shelter they need, showing up in lines to donate blood checking in with each other, standing with each other. And lastly, before I close, we stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. It should not be controversial to say that we stand with Israel after a terrorist attack. When we look back at how we, many women, Americans, Jews, people of faith, people of no faith, how we have looked back and you think of examples of terror around the world and in our own country, the response is always unequivocal support for the people and the place. And Israel deserves that from us now. There is a time and a place for other messaging and criticism of the government of Israel. And as you know, NCJW has been quite vocal against the occupation and against the judicial overhaul. But this is a time to zoom in on this terror and to stand with the Israeli people who are in trauma. We don't know what to expect in the coming days and weeks and months, but we do know that this will be a long, long fight. We believe the casualties are going to increase, and we also believe they are going to continue to be brutal. We are hearing that children in Israel have been told to delete their TikToks from their phones because Hamas has said that they will slaughter some of these hostages with the sound on and televised. And we continue to dream of at this time that's so painful, and we continue to actively build for a world in which women, children, and families, in which all people can be safe, can thrive, can live in peace and freedom. We at the National Council of Jewish Women 
all of you at NCJW, our advocates, our allies, our partners on this call. We have been working towards that world for so long. And we know that now more than ever, that work is so desperately needed. And we know that there are more of us who believe in a path towards peace than those who don't. I do want to share, obviously, this could change for a variety of reasons, but as of right now, I'm planning on going on a solidarity mission to Israel um, next week, and I will be there representing National Council of Jewish Women and checking in on the people most impacted and ensuring that our voices for peace are part of the calls to the government. Um, and I'll be able to share more after I get back from that trip, not before. Um, I want to name a note of immense gratitude to the National Council of Jewish Women Headquarters staff for coming together so quickly to enable this morning's call and our ongoing response to the war in Israel in particular, and we're about to hear her for, in a moment, I want to thank Kalila Lancaster um, and Anat Maital, NCJW's team on the ground in Israel for their strength and guidance as they are living through this horrible terror. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here today to share that we are committed to giving you resources to being in this in an ongoing way for you, for fighting for peace and love and justice, and for making sure that those of you like me that have people who are being held hostage that we love and care for, those of us who have lost people that we love, that we continue to be in community together and stand with each other as we're navigating this as a community. With that, I wanna thank you. I wanna turn it over to my friends and colleague, um, an amazing partner in justice, Kalila Lancaster, NCGW's Israel Program Manager, to share her personal reflections. Kalila. Thank you, Sheila. Um, and I also want to take this opportunity to thank, to say thank you to so many of you uh, who are here on this call, who have reached out to me personally to express your care and concern. Even if I haven't managed to respond, please know that it means so much to hear from you in this very traumatic, awful time. So uh, Sheila asked me to share something just a little bit personal about what life is like right now over here. So I wanted to say that, you know, I live a little bit north of center in Israel. And so I haven't been in the direct line of fire so far, thank God. But there is no escaping this war, which is all around us. The trauma and devastation are unrelenting. The scale is unfathomable. More and more stories of loved ones emerge every moment. Friends who live in border communities, young people who are at that desert rave, children of friends who are in the army. Shock after shock after shock until you just can't feel shock or anything anymore. My children are 10 and 13. There's no school right now. Every moment is a dilemma of how much to protect them and how much to prepare them. How to be there for them and for ourselves and for the war effort all at once. We don't know what's coming next. The northern border, Iran, every sound overhead makes us jump. And there are lots of sounds overhead. And my family, as I said, don't even live in the line of fire. But what I do want to emphasize is that, as Sheila said, Israeli people and especially Israeli women are organizing, even within the deep pain and trauma that we're going through. And that the NCJW team, which is myself and my wonderful colleague, Ainat Metal, are involved. We are assessing the needs and consulting with our partners in the feminist field who are viewing this crisis through a gender lens. Some of the things that our partners uh, are focused on right now are centering the most marginalized and vulnerable women in humanitarian relief efforts, like Bedouin communities of unrecognized villages in the South, for example. They're involved with lobbying to get women onto the decision-making tables that are managing this conflict that are entirely dominated by men. They are working to draw the world's attention to the plight of hostages and pushing for an international pressure effort for them to be spared the worst crimes imaginable, especially women and children. And they are speaking out with a feminist voice, maybe a different voice than the dominant voice that is heard. 
a voice that de-escalates and forges compassion and remembers the children at home, even prioritizes the children at home. And as well, our partners are talking about what's going to come next, an unfathomable scale of post-trauma that will seep into our homes and wreak untold damage on women, children, and families. Our partners in Israel will be there for this, and we at NCJW will be there for them. In this moment, I want to say that I'm so grateful to be part of the NCJW family, to know that I'm part of this powerful community of advocates who are ready to channel their support, care, voice, and resources in partnership with us here in Israel. Thank you so much for your solidarity. Now I'm going to hang out, hand over to my colleague, Rabbi Daniel Ruttenberg, NCJW's scholar in residence, who will hold space for us to mourn together as a community. Thank you. Good morning, good day, everybody. Well, thank you for being here. This is such a difficult time for so many of us, and so many of us are personally impacted in in so many different ways. And so many of us are processing the news of this attack and all of the unfolding events in a lot of different ways. And I just wanna say that wherever you are is okay, okay? Just please be try to be compassionate with yourself and compassionate with other people. Remember that everyone is in a, a different place and that's okay too. Let's take a moment or two to try to get here. Take a few deep breaths. I'm going to say the El Mala Rachamim, the prayer for the souls of the departed in honor of everybody who's been killed and murdered since the attack on Shemini Yetzirah. Um, I'm going to recite it in the Hebrew and as you can see, the transliteration and the English is on the screen. Now, please feel invited to join me in saying the Kaddish, the mourner's Kaddish, if you are so moved. You'll find the Hebrew and transliteration on the screen, as well as um, 
a more literal, literal translation of the prayer will be in the chat. Um, I will close by reading a, an interpretive translation by the Jewish American poet, uh, Marge Piercy. Please feel free to add names in the chat if you're comfortable of those you know who have been murdered and those who are missing. Yidgedal, the Kedash, Shemei Rabba, the Alma, the Vrach Girote, the Amlich Marhute, the Chayachon, of Yomechon, of Chaye de Robe Israel, Bagala, of Isman Kari, in Ru, Amen. Yehe Shemei Rabba, the Vrach, the Alam, Ome Omaya. Yit barach, the yish de bach, the yit paal, the yit roman, the yit na se, the yit hadal, the yit hale, the yit halel, shmid gudisha, rehu, the ela, min kol birchata, the shirata, dushbechata, the nechamata, tamiram vilma, vimru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba, min shemaya, the chaim alenu, vi al kol yisrael, vimru. Amen. Ose shalom b'lomar. Hu yaase shalom. Aleinu. Yal kol Yisrael. Yal kol Yoshvei Tevel. Inru. Amen. Kadesh by Marge Piercy. Look around us. Search above us. Below. Behind. We stand in a great web of being joined together. Let us praise, let us love the life that we are lent passing through the body of Israel and our own bodies, let's say, amen. Time flows through us like water. The past and the dead speak through us. We breathe out our children's children, blessing. Blessed is the earth from which we grow. Blessed is the life we are lent. Blessed is the ones who teach us. Blessed are the ones that we teach. Blessed is the word that cannot say the glory that shines through us and remains to shine flowing past distant suns on their way to forever. Let us say amen. Blessed is light. Blessed is darkness. But blessed above all else is peace which bears the fruits of knowledge on strong branches. Let's say amen. Peace that bears joy into the world. Peace that enables love. Peace over Israel everywhere. Blessed and holy is peace. Let us say amen. I'd like to introduce NCJW President Laura Mon Ginsburg to close us out. Thank you so much, Rabbi Danya. That was really meaningful. And I know that we are all holding many emotions at this time. I am so grateful to be together with all of you and grateful to serve as president of National Council of Jewish Women. This has been a hard time and it is truly invigorating to me to see so many of you signed on today to join with us as we mourn and think of the ways that we can do something, anything to help in this moment. We certainly couldn't do any of what we do at National Council of Jewish Women without all of you. It is incredible to see the response from our field, both seeing you all here on Zoom and knowing and seeing your messages that are going out into the world. We hope that you'll continue to provide support to the efforts that Kalela mentioned earlier the work of NCJW's Israel Granting Program works closely hand in hand on the ground with partners, and we know that they have many essential initiatives underway, especially those that center women, children, and families experiencing trauma and abuse. Please consider donating to, that, to the IGP program as we continue to do our work through our network of partners. Our partners at Jewish Federation of North America have also set up the Operation Swords of Iron Emergency Fund. This is to help victims of terror, rebuild damaged infrastructure, address unprecedented levels of trauma, and help with funeral costs and other immediate needs. Personally, I will be giving to both of these. I think it is equally important that we do our work through NCJW 
with our lens on women, children, and families, as well as understand that there are other organizations in our partnership network that have broad infrastructure set up to be deployed at a time like this. We'll have those links in the chat. We'll include them in a follow-up email. And there's more that you can do. We know that financially donating is, is something that is our go-to for many of us. We need your voices as well. Thank your members of Congress, your local lawmakers, anybody else who is speaking out to support Israel. Being on record, especially in politically fraught times is important, especially in these very early days of a war. Israel needs as much support as possible right now. And if your elected officials didn't make a public statement, or if their words missed the mark, let them know that too. NCGW has talking points that you can use to help guide them, and we will be happy to support you in reaching out. NCGW is also supporting a congressional resolution, which is expected to be introduced in the House today. This condemns Hamas's brutal war on Israel stands with Israel and reaffirms Israel's right to self-defense, reaffirms the United States commitment to Israel's security and stands ready to assist Israel with emergency resupply and other security, diplomatic and intelligence support, urges full enforcement of US sanctions against Iran to prevent Iran's funding of terrorist groups, including Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Take action through NCJW's Action Alert. We'll drop that link in the chat for you as well. And ensure that your representative is a co-sponsor. You can send an email to your representative at ncjw.org slash act for Israel. And I see that that just went in the chat. Thank you, Kristen. You can also co-sponsor, support, and attend vigils and gatherings happening in communities around the country. We'll have a link as well for where you can find those in your own area. Personally, I will be going to Bethel Synagogue this evening here in Minneapolis, where I will be joining with many community members as well as members of the NCJW Minnesota section as we mourn together. Finally, many of you are reaching out to your loved ones in Israel and your friends and family and your friends with family in Israel. And checking on them is a great way to take care of those that you love and those that are in our networks. We may be in this for the long haul and recognizing what your community needs and what you need to sustain yourself. And as Rabbi Danya so eloquently put in her remarks, it is important to take care of yourself so that you can take care of this work. Beyond the headlines and political complexities, real people, parents, children, families, are the victims of this heinous violence. We hold them close. We mourn the great loss of life and pray for the safe recovery of all hostages. NCJW unequivocally supports the people of Israel and the right of Israel to defend itself in times of great turmoil. And we also believe that all in the region, Israeli and Palestinian alike, should be able to live in safety. Ufro Soleno Sukats Fomeka, spread over us your shelter of peace. On behalf of National Council of Jewish Women, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all that you do, and we wish you well.